Welcome to Cogito Design, the YouTube channel where we discuss all things tabletop. Today, we're going to be asking the question, what is the perfect board game component? Tabletop games are fundamentally tangible things. They exist in the world in a physical sense and are thus fundamentally limited. Video games can transport their players to strange worlds, create entire universes and tell remarkable stories. Their digital nature is their strength. They are not limited by the constraints of the world and as such, they can break all the rules and build something new. Even the laws of physics are playthings for video game developers. But fundamentally, video games are digital entities. Ones and zeros running through a silicon chip to create these fabulous experiences. Their greatest strength is also their greatest weakness. Board games are the opposite. They are constrained by the dreary monotony of our very own laws of physics, whilst epic D&D campaigns and creative writing may in some way free us from this, that freedom occurs only in the imagination of the players. The game itself, the cards, the board, the dice, remain landlocked and limited. Many, indeed perhaps most gamers, have now therefore left the world of tabletop games and moved to the exciting new realm of the digital. For tabletop games, their physical limitation is their greatest weakness, but it is also their greatest strength. To reiterate, tabletop games are fundamentally tangible things. They exist in the world in a physical sense, and whilst this means they are limited in many ways, in others they exceed even the wildest dreams of digital games. They exist in the real world. You can hold them, touch them, smell them. You can feel the subtle linen finish of the punch board, appreciate the weight of a first player token, caress a hand of beautiful metal coins. Oh, sorry, I got a bit distracted there. Where was I? Board games, tangible things. And, and that is one of the many things that are wonderful about them. As such, one of the most important elements in tabletop game design is the components themselves. Mechanisms are of course still crucial, and no matter how pretty it is, a bad game is a bad game, but there is more to the world of tabletop games than mere mechanisms. The components matter. In this video, I'm going to be looking at some of the greatest components in board game history and asking which is the perfect one. I should say here that I'm not going to be discussing the art of tabletop games. This is, of course, a great part of the components in games, but could equally be applied to video games. For this video, I want to discuss the physicality of the components themselves, the objects you hold and manipulate as you play. So first, we have to talk about possibly the oldest of all board game components, dice. Dice are very probably the oldest gaming implements known to humanity. There is an ancient tradition of casting lots to divine the future, but almost as ancient is the tradition of tossing marked ankle bones from sheep and buffalo, not to tell the future, but to engage in the present, to play. The game of knuckle bones is so ingrained in humanity that it seems to have been independently invented in some form or other by tribes of humanity from across the globe. With archaeological digs uncovering weirdly large amounts of these astragaly bones in ancient human settlements. From this, and surprisingly quickly, came the modern D6 dice we know and love today. Amazingly, these creations actually remain largely unchanged. The ancient Greeks tried to claim them, with Sophocles saying they were invented to while away time during the Siege of Troy. But in reality, they are far, far older than this. In fact, dice astoundingly similar to our own appear in ancient Sanskrit writings and even Egyptian tombs from over 4,000 years ago. The great thing about dice is how a simple cube or a far less simple trapezohedron can be rolled to add an element of randomness into a game. Whilst perfect information games certainly have their place in the panoply of the tabletop, sometimes a little randomness is the perfect addition to a game to increase excitement, balance outcomes and add variety to games. Playing cards are another consistent classic of tabletop games. These date back to the Tang Dynasty in China over 1,000 years ago and spread across the world from there. 
Cards, like dice, have the ability to add some randomness into games. A card drawn from the top of a freshly shuffled deck is a mystery waiting to be revealed. But in addition to this, cards allow for more information to be held in the revealed element. You do not just get a number, you also gain a suit. Or, if you add in writing and symbology, you have a virtually unlimited amount that can be conveyed on these simple and cheap to produce components. Cards have another great possibility. You can hold a hand of them. Once the die is rolled and its result revealed, that result must disappear before the next roll can arrive. But cards can come in decks. This promotes the use of pre luck style games, where the randomness precedes the decision making, rather than post luck games, where the randomness is the deciding factor. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I'm a big fan of pre luck. But perhaps these examples are a little too generic, too old fashioned. Could the perfect component be something that has come more recently? Many modern games have some very exciting elements. The rise of the miniature game in the last decade has been interesting to note. Companies like Simon have been creating a seemingly endless array of games which often feature dozens of fantastically intricate models. These tactile statuettes are a great way to embed players into the game world, and painting them has even become a hobby in its own right. Another common element in modern games is the inclusion of metal coins. These are probably my personal favourite. Being essentially identical to their real world counterparts, they are just so thematic, and the solidity of the metal is a great counterpoint to the traditional light card and punch board found so consistently elsewhere. More specifically, there are some very unique components that have arisen in the last few years, some of which are notable for their immense spectacle and others for their subtle effectiveness. On the spectacle side, we have games like Return to Dark Towers by Restoration Games, which features a 300mm tall animatronic tower dominating the centre of the board. The tower contains a speaker, lights, motors and rotating gears, all controlled by a bespoke app. It is an incredible melding of the tangible and the digital, and it's no wonder it raised over $4 million on Kickstarter. In the epic social deduction game Blood on the Clock Tower, the box itself doubles up as this beautiful grimoire held by the storyteller during the game. The inside of this box is felt and tokens can be stuck to it, discreetly helping to track the twists and turns of the story. It's a thing of beauty. In our game Solar 175, we included a bespoke world building magazine, featuring interviews with characters, articles of events, and even adverts from the corporations in the game. Whilst it's not strictly a component per se, this novel element was a great way to immerse players in the sci fi dystopian universe they found themselves in in the game. On the more subtle side, Viticulture features these gorgeous little glass beads that represent grapes and ultimately wine bottles. The genius of these is that they are placed onto this space of the player board, and then magically take on their identity as red or white grapes. It is such a simple, genius idea to immerse players in their role as Tuscan winemakers. Staying with publishers Stonemaier Games, we have Wingspan, which features not just this fun bird feeder slash dice tower, but these fantastic pastel-coloured wooden bird eggs. Another subtle but beautiful addition to the tabletop. In Everdell, the Evertree may be only punchboard, and thus a little less impressive than the Grand Tower from the Return to Dark Tower, but it really adds a vertical dimension to the tabletop, and combines with the other fabulous components in the game. The squishy berry tokens are just delightful. Our latest game, Meeple Link, has some very exciting components in it. Meeple Inc. is a game which pits you as a CEO of a board game publishing company, assigning your workers to various jobs aiming to build the greatest games known to humanity. The deluxe version of this game has a wooden board game shelf and tiny board game boxes to populate it. Not only that, there are miniature metal board game trophies to win, wooden screen printed tokens and stunning acrylic standees. We even have a little hourglass miniature to track the time of the game. And of course, metal coins. 
If you aren't watching this sometime in the future, then it would also be remiss of me not to mention that this game is live now on GameFound, and there's a link below in the comments. If you like gorgeous board game components, we'd love your support to make Meeple Inc. a reality, and it is one of the best ways you can support this channel. Anyway, back to our fundamental question. What is the perfect board game component? Well, as you've probably guessed from the start of this video, there is no perfect component, or rather, there are many. The perfect component is the one which most fits the needs of the game, and the one that best immerses you into the universe you are playing within. This will vary from game to game, and this could mean a miniature shelving unit or an animatronic tower. It could be transparent glass beads or intricate miniatures. The wonderful thing about tabletop components is not that there is a perfect one. It is that so many of them can be perfect. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, then please consider all the usual likes and subscribes. And as always, thank you so much to our loyal patrons for helping us keep this channel going. See you next time. Bye.